this is Radish Head, and welcome back to another episode of Upland Analysis. Well, the Los Angeles release has arrived, and I think it's about time that I do a breakdown of the, uh, the, of the release and what the Upland world looks like in the wake of that unbelievable um, deluge of Upix that has flowed out from people's wallets and into the streets of Los Angeles. I thought it'd be fun to do something a bit different. I'm going to split this up into the good, the bad, and the ugly. I might put a fun uh, Clint Eastwood thumbnail on the image or something. <laughs> so, uh, But yeah, let's talk about the good first, because I think that's always a nice, happy place to start. And... Um, I think the good for me in terms of the release is that when it worked, there actually was enough opportunity for every player to get something they wanted. Um, as long as they were able to move quickly from place to place and um, didn't linger in one location for too long. Because Los Angeles is so big, even though there were quite a few um, really popular areas... You didn't have to like be in that area necessarily right at the start in order to mint there, except a couple of uh, exceptions being um, Hollywood Boulevard. Obviously, that minted in seconds from what I heard. I didn't even bother going there because I knew it was going to be absolutely insane. Um, I believe Sunset Boulevard was similar. And I think Chinatown was actually similar. Like, I knew it was going to be popular, but I was surprised at just how quickly that one minted out. But there were a lot of really good areas that didn't mint out for, like, 10, 20 minutes in. Um, like Century City. I got some really nice properties in Century City that I'm going to show off in a minute. Um, I actually started my Explorer... And uh, this just goes to show just because I'm an exec and, um, you know, I'm also a, a UCN member, whatever, I don't have any any advantages. And uh, I, I kind of blundered a little bit in the LA release. So I'll, I'll tell you what I did wrong. So my Explorer, when the uh, city was unlocked, was actually just drifting across this neighborhood here to the east of downtown uh, Boyle Heights and it was on such a good trajectory and I was I was gutted because um you know through all the stress tests that happened before the full release I wasn't involved in those at all because I wanted my explorer to cross this boundary into downtown and then I could grab loads of really cool downtown properties um my target, number one, was this stress level zero because I thought it was a hilarious name because everyone gets really stressed in the stress tests and I wanted to be able to take a screenshot of stress level zero saying, I'm cool, I've, I'm, I'm at stress level zero. But unfortunately, I was literally like two minutes off. If the release was delayed for like five minutes, I would have been right there. But um, instead, my explorer was like around this area. It was yeah, it was it was like just coming up to this this uh, river here. Um, so the first thing I minted was this Puerto del Pacifico, because uh, I know that any property with a name on it is always popular. Then I quickly looked back on the trail that my explorer was making and noticed that actually I'd kind of sailed through like the absolute cheapest bit of LA. <laughs> so I thought I might as well grab a few, um, you know, while I'm here. And I basically just went on a bit of a minting spree because all of these are like 6k. That's as cheap as you as you can get in LA South uh, without being an FSA player. So I thought for the sake of flipping later, um, you know, when the floor in LA goes up, I'll hold on to these because that's about like 14 properties. They're all like really cheap. So that was a bit of a win. Then I jumped over immediately to downtown and um, I grabbed some stuff here. I can't remember the exact order I did all these things, but I'm pretty sure I jumped across to downtown and grabbed some stuff here. Um, some of which I've sold already. Um, one of which I wish I hadn't sold. It was this this one here. Um, this guy's selling it for 100k, so maybe maybe I'm not maybe I'm wrong, but I th I thought this had a chance of being an ultra rare, and I didn't notice until after I'd sold it. Always check the street views of your properties before you sell them. Because uh, this one, I clicked on it after I sold it. I was like, oh, what is this? There's like this film director. I went to the right. There's this guy with a camera. I noticed that I'm on a camera. And I'm thinking, what, <laughs> what is this? And then I turned around and oh my God, 
there's a massive mural. And they're filming an ad in front of it in the street view. Like, or something. So, this might be the top tip. Um, if you think there's going to be a mural collection in Los Angeles, uh, this guy is selling my old property for 100k. So, uh, yeah. If that is a ultra rare, you know, obviously that's going to be unbelievably valuable. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's my tip. <laughs> Don't make the same mistake I did. Um, what else did I do? Okay, so this was my number one blunder. And it was a high risk play. I knew it was going to be a high risk play, but I went for it anyway. Because you only get one shot. You get one chance. <laughs> as, a, as, a, uh, as a famous rapper once said. And... Um, I, as I said in my prediction video, I liked the idea of Morningside Park. I still do, by the way. There's still stuff to mint in Morningside Park if you want to speculate on the NFL connection. Um, but I was like, oh, there's the stadium. But there's this huge property next to it that's labelled NFL HQ. And I jumped over here. Yeah, yeah, I've got a property over here. And I was drifting. I was so close. I was literally, I'm not even exaggerating. I was drifting there for like five minutes and I knew I was missing out on all the opportunities in places like Chinatown or the cheap stuff in Hollywood, if there was any cheap stuff in Hollywood. But I was so, so close and my Explorer must have been, it was going at quite a, an annoying angle. So it wasn't like directly towards the NFL HQ, it was sort of going up. I think it was about here, but it looked like it was definitely going to go in range and uh, it just it just got minted just in front of my face i was so upset and the the worst thing is it went to this like super whale here um mjc3337 everyone knows him everyone loves him but uh damn that could have been mine i was so excited cuz i i didn't think anyone else had seen it um never mind so that was my disappointment but i'd got some good things so i got some stuff in downtown um, I managed to grab something in Palms, which was actually on Venice Boulevard. I think Venice Boulevard's got a shot. I wasn't seeing too many people like getting super excited about it, but I think that's got a shot. I think Palms has a shot, to be honest. Like just the name, you know, it's just a nice place to be. Century City is really where a lot of my best stuff is. Um, and uh, if any of you watching have stuff in Century City, like hit me up. Um, me and me and a couple of other people, we've, we've got some big plans for Century City. It's such a small neighbourhood. It's iconic. It's in like the greatest city in the game, Los Angeles. Um, and I think not only does it have great collection potential, by the way, I think it's undervalued right now. Like the floor's like 70k. I think it should be at least 100k. Um, for you know, for a neighborhood this small that could be an exclusive collection, um, but yeah, I I think we have got some big plans for it. So so keep an eye out for that. Um, so I I got a few of the cheaper ones over here just in case I wanted to flip them, and then I went over here, and on Santa Monica Boulevard, no less, which um, again could be a collection. I managed to grab this absolute beast of a property here, the ten thousand. And um, I didn't really appreciate what it was when I bought it. I just saw that it had a name and it was a really cool name. I was like, who does want to be the 10,000? You'll see I'm selling it for five and a half million Upix. That is about 10 times what I paid for it. But honestly, I think there's a chance that could be worth it. Because the street view of this thing. Look, look at this property. <laughs> It's a skyscraper. It's 40 floors high. It's the 35th largest, well, tallest building in Los Angeles. It's a very, very fancy hotel. Um, quite new. And it is located on Santa Monica Boulevard, right, right on the edge of Beverly Hills. This borderline you see here is Beverly Hills. Obviously, that didn't come out in the South LA release, but I think Upland will probably release it as a separate release later on. So that gives me a really, really good launching point to, uh, you know, set my Explorer off and then just mint some really good stuff in Beverly Hills when they do that. So I'm super excited about that. I'm not going to complain if somebody wants to buy that for five and a half million upics. You know, I'm just saying. Um, 
But uh, yeah, if it doesn't sell for that, I'm not going much cheaper because I absolutely love that property. So let me know in the comments um, how you did in LA. Um, I'd love to see like your favourite property. I might go through in the next video and have a look at some of your guys' uh, favourite properties that you got in LA. Um, have a look at some street views. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys uh, come up with in the comments. But that was the good for me. Let's talk about the bad. And um, there's no real getting a around it. Um, some I've already had multiple people uh, call out to me saying, hey, are you going to talk about this release because it was kind of busted? <sighs> yes, it kind of was. Now, I'm not going to go all clickbaity and say that it was the worst release I've ever had. It wasn't. Um, you know, I know a lot of people watching are fairly new. You weren't around for the Oakland release, which was worse than this one. Um, man, like in, in terms of the stress tests, I know the stress tests in LA weren't perfect, but they were a lot better than the ones we had in the Bronx. So, you know, it's it's not the worst release we've ever had, but it was one of the most hyped releases we've ever had. The amount of players who were, you know, had high expectations for LA were surely off the charts, like nothing we've ever seen. And, you know, to be fair to Upland, that obviously comes with a lot of um, difficulties in terms of maintaining the the server capacity. And you've got to remember, you know, I don't want to be all, all in defence of Upland, but, uh, you know, in their defence, they, they are basically doing something unprecedented here. Um, like what Upland is doing on the blockchain, having to... Um, you know, coordinate all of these people, like sending to properties, like every single time somebody sends to a property, that's a transaction on the blockchain. Every time somebody like clicks on a property, it kind of has to load the system to tell you what the latest status is on that. And you'd get a situation where thousands and thousands of people are all like clicking on the same properties on Hollywood Boulevard or whatever. That's basically what happened. Um, I've got absolutely no doubt that uh, Upland is, is working on it because they are getting better. It's hard to believe it, but they are getting better. And, um, you know, in, in some regards, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. The one thing I can't really forgive them for, in my opinion, is how slowly it took them to actually shut the whole thing down after it became really clear that the vast majority of players weren't able to mint anything and I was one of them I got accused of being like a um like part of the rigged uh like moderator community or something that all like the execs it's like oh the execs they're all minting stuff uh, and all the plebs are stuck with the infinite loading screen of death I was stuck I was in Hollywood I was trying to mint stuff in Hollywood <laughs> I was clicking on this same property again and again. I think it was using up sends as well. I was having a lot of issues. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not even exaggerating. I mean, I think most people had the same issue as me. It was like at least 20 minutes of not being able to do anything. But I know that some people could do stuff because I was slowly seeing stuff around me getting minted. And that is the unacceptable bit. I don't, I'm not even that fussed that the launch didn't go perfectly. Because as I say, it's ambitious. But if somebody from the Upland team is watching this video, next time that happens, and it's like clear that the vast majority of people are having significant issues, you can't just ride it out for 20 minutes while a small minority of people can still mint stuff. Because that's how you get, um, you know, accusations of the game being like rigged or that it's not fair for everybody. And a lot of what Upland is all about is in the confidence in the economy and the confidence of the game and that everybody has an equal shot. And I really do think that in like delaying the shutting down the site for maintenance for about 20 minutes, um, you know, before you took that action, that was too long. Um, so yeah, if anybody from Upland is watching, please take that feedback. I, I have no doubt that the majority of people watching this think that's a, a pretty sensible position to take. It wasn't all bad, but that was, uh, you know, in my good, bad, ugly uh, analogy that I'm doing for this video, that was the bad. So, um, yeah. What about the ugly? Well, I, I'm going to say uh, that there was a lot of hype before LA came out. Um, I said originally... Based on the size of the city and how expensive it, it is, my first prediction was it would be about half as long 
as Chicago to mint out. So I said three months. And then there were so many people saying, well, the game has just blown up recently and LA is way better than Chicago. Um, and I decided to like cut down my prediction. I said, OK, OK, maybe like one or two months. But looking at the uh, at the Discord and at other people's YouTubes and, and all sorts, I've started to feel like the odd one out. There were people saying it was going to sell out in a, in a week or and <laughs> I said to somebody on the Discord, because they said, I think it's going to sell out in a day. And I said, if Los Angeles, I first of all, I said, lol, <laughs> like that's ridiculous. That's not going to happen. And then I said, OK, that was a bit mean. If Los Angeles sells out in a day, I'm going to apologize to you on camera on my channel. Um, well, I'm not going to say who it was because uh, I'm sorry. Los Angeles didn't sell out in a day. And that's kind of tied into the ugly. And that really is just the LA property prices. Um, not all Upland's fault, because of course they do model it on real world property prices. Um, but geez, like this is Koreatown. Koreatown wasn't like top of anyone's speculation lists, but it was like on speculation lists. Like it's not just some nobody region like Koreatown you, you've watched my speculation video it's it's one of those like immigrant community um collection areas possibly it's uh you know it's got some great history it's got a lot of culture all of that but look at it like hardly any of it's minted and you know why it's because everybody spent all of their upex minting stuff in other neighborhoods that were really really expensive like hollywood i bought three properties there i think i must have spent about 350k in total and like look at these ones just a small property in koreatown 40k there's only so many of these that you can buy and uh, i've got no doubt that over the next few weeks this stuff's going to mint out but um in terms of a full minting of Los Angeles, I'm going to go back to my original prediction. I think it's going to be at least three months. Like these prices are beyond anything I could comprehend uh, before the city release. And um, North LA isn't even out yet. I think South LA actually will mint like within the next two, three months. And North LA will sort of be there as a like a new player go to. So when new players join the game and they're saying, hey, where can I mint? Um, I think the go-to response will be there'll be cheap stuff in North LA. I think there'll be quite a lot of FSAs, not cheap, cheap, but like 5k and below uh, for players. I think that's that's Upland's plan is to get everybody to spend all their money in Los Angeles, mint as much of it as possible. And then North LA will sort of be there as the, um, you know, just the city for, for new players to feel like they've got a stake in the game. Uh, which is exactly what I've said in an earlier video. Players want to be able to come into the game, get their free upics that they start with, and just get a stake in the game. Be able to buy one property, at least one. Um, so that's part of the ugly. And then linked to that, wow, um, some of these cities have seen quite significant impacts because obviously people want to mint stuff in uh, in LA. There's still properties available up in the Hollywood Hills and people want to buy in the Hollywood Hills. It's a great place to be, but it costs like 100,000 UPEX plus just to be part of that. So what's inevitably going to happen? The, uh, the prices in other cities are going to go down. I was looking earlier, I'm probably going to make a fool of myself now because it's probably not the case, but I was looking over in Oakland earlier and um, or Berkeley to be precise, and I noticed that there was, this is the South Berkeley collection area, right? Let's have a look at what people are selling for. 18 and 19,000. That is a massive drop on what it was before. Now, I just want to say, um, I think that Berkeley being a fairly new release, and I think South Berkeley in particular was minted out by a lot of new players who are probably more desperate for the cash. So this collection might be a little bit more dynamic and, and responsive to changes like new city releases and the standard city. Uh, sorry, the standard than other collections. But it is worth calling out. Um, yeah, 19k. There was one for 16k earlier. I should have bought that really. Um, but yeah, the, that's the, this is not a standard collection. This is a limited collection in a tier 2 city. Um, yeah, by the way, if you've got some spare epics, um, have a look around. 
because there are some really good deals around. I'm not going to go through. Maybe in a future video, I'll do a deep dive on some cities and see how the uh, the prices have changed from pre-LA to post-LA. See if we can see if there's any collections that have been impacted more than others or if non-collection areas have been impacted more than collection areas. I will say that I had a look at Chicago and the um, the exclusive collections there like Loop, Gold Coast, they've all held up really well. So obviously those are held by players who probably have a bit more upix to, to spare. They can uh, cash out other areas and they can hold on to their really valuable stuff. But, you know, cheaper cities and non-collection areas, I think um, the price is going to drop quite significantly as a result of LA. It might take a little bit of time for them to go back up because, as you can see, I spent about 2 million upex. I spent the vast majority of my money, more than I was planning to spend in LA, to be honest. Um, I don't regret it, but that's the reality of the situation. The ugly thing is that the economy has undoubtedly been impacted in quite a major way by the LA release. Even in LA, some of these areas, which I think are really good collection speculation areas like Century City, are way cheaper than I think they otherwise should be. If um, this was a smaller city release and people hadn't lost as much Apex as they had, there is no way that Century City's floor would be like 75k. It'd be at least 100k, um, in my opinion. But people just don't have the money to spend. So that's my insights. That's the good. That's the bad. That's the ugly. I hope you found that helpful and insightful. Don't forget to let me know what your favorite LA properties that you minted were and uh, let me know what you think of the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd love it if you gave me a like because it really, really does help me out. And if you want to see similar videos to this in the future, it'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel as well. But until next time, I'll see you then.